distant, mysterious, and extraordinarily beautiful. That's how one might describe Antarctica, this little explored sixth continent on Earth. Located in the very south of the planet, Antarctica is surrounded on all sides by the Southern Ocean and is the highest and coldest continent on our planet, with endless snowy expanses, which do not melt even under the sun of the Antarctic summer, are amazing, and its unique ecosystem, adapted to extreme conditions, remains an object of study for the whole world. Today we will travel to Antarctica and learn about its history, nature and the people who have dedicated their lives to exploring this continent. We will meet those who have risked the harsh Antarctic winters to explore this mysterious continent, not just for the sake of orcas, but to make important discoveries that will help us better understand our planet. We'll see what remains so appealing to cold land explorers. The discovery of Antarctica is a multi-layered topic as it is a mix of myths, speculation, early observations, and actual landings. Unlike other continents that were settled long ago, Antarctica was the last to be discovered because of its remote location and harsh climate. In the winter months, from June to August, the temperature in the central continental areas can drop to minus 75 degrees. In January and February, it gets a little warmer up to minus 30, and on the coast and at all the temperature can rise to zero degrees. Such a severe temperature regime is explained by the absence of precipitation in the form of rain on the continent. The average thickness of Antarctica's ice is more than two and a half kilometers. These are the largest ice formations on the planet, which are 10 times larger than the Greenland ice. In Antarctica, 80 of all fresh water available to mankind is concentrated in frozen form. If one day the ice cover of the southern continent melts, the level of the world's oceans will rise by 60 meters. But we are sure that energetic snow advocates will not let this happen. For time passed, and in August 1946, Richard Barrett organized the largest Antarctic expedition at that time, the main objectives of which were to establish the Little America 4 research base, to train personnel and test equipment under harsh conditions, and to determine the feasibility of establishing, maintaining, and using bases in the Antarctic. The expedition provided invaluable information on how standard equipment performs under polar conditions. There was also an opportunity to evaluate the work of personnel in extremely cold conditions. The expedition also established a research base that contributed to the continued human presence on the continent, including the creation of more advanced polar icebreaking and aviation technologies. Since the middle of the 20th century, more active study of Antarctica began. Numerous permanent bases were established on the continent by different countries, conducting meteorological, geological, and other studies all year round. At that time, there were about 40 bases and stations from 11 countries in Antarctica. One of the remarkable discoveries was made by a Soviet expedition that arrived on huge all-terrain vehicles in the depths of central Antarctica. The polar explorers stopped at the South Geomagnetic Pole. At this place, they founded the new scientific station Vostok. On December 16, 1957, the day when the station was founded, none of its founders could not think that here under the multi-kilometer thickness, a unique relic water body would be discovered. The discovery of this lake became one of the largest geographical discoveries of the second half of the 20th century. For the first time, the hypothesis about the existence of a group of lakes under the ice cover of Antarctica was expressed by Igor Alexeyevich Zotakov in 1961. On the basis of calculations, he showed that the ice temperature in the area of the Antarctic station Vostok can reach the melting point at a pressure of more than 300 atmospheres. Consequently, melt water in this place and separate depressions can accumulate in the form of Studies have shown that the lake is about 250 kilometers long, about 50 kilometers wide, and up to 750 meters deep. This unfrozen lake is completely cut off from direct contact with the sun, winds, and life on the surface by the thickness of ice. The water temperature in the lake is very high, about 10 to 18 Celsius indicating an underground heat source. Lake Vostok is unique primarily because it has been isolated from the Earth's surface for several million years. The main method of studying the lake and the ice dome above it is depth drilling. In this regard, a methodology for thermal drilling of wells was developed. At a depth of 3,769 meters, the surface of the subglacial lake was reached. The first sample from the transparent lake ice was obtained, in which new types of bacteria were found, such as 12310, which feeds on ethane, 
a finding that allows astrobiologists to consider the possibility of similar bacteria in the open groundwater on Mars, as well as satellites such as Europa. For some, it will be surprising, but there is something to see here, even if you are not a scientist and not a fan of freezing with a smile on your face. Recall that the area of the continent is more than 14 million square kilometers. Naturally, it is not possible to see all the natural attractions of the continent with all desire. But if you decided to make such an extreme journey and made this long journey, you need to know about all the interesting memorable objects located in Antarctica. Leading this list, of course, is the southernmost point of the globe, located in the middle of the beautiful Polar Plateau at an altitude of 2,800 meters above sea level. And not far from it is the Antarctic Pole of Inaccessibility, the most remote point from the coast of the Southern Ocean. Everyone who gets to Antarctica from the Atlantic Ocean sails through Bouvet Island. The name of this island of land was given by a French navigator who dreamed of finding a tropical paradise in the south. He obviously overdid it with the tropics, but the local seals and penguins are not offended by it. Although here, as in the whole Antarctic, there is almost no vegetation, but in the center of the island there is a real volcano. The coast of Queen Maudland, named after the Queen of Norway, is always filled with icebergs. Legend has it that it was here that the German Nazis tried to build their underwater new Swabia at the end of World War II and laid claim to these territories. But now the local ice is used only for scientific research, and in 2005 the Norwegian Queen arrived in these harsh lands with a mission to open the polar station Troll. The continent is home to more than a hundred volcanoes. Most of them have been discovered in the last 20 years. This is due to the fact that most of them are located under a kilometer thick layer of ice. The most active volcano in Antarctica is Erebus. He is called the Guardian of the South Pole. Considering the volcanoes of Antarctica, it is necessary to mention the active volcano Melbourne, the height of which is almost three kilometers. You can see its snow-covered slopes and summit from Ross Island. It is believed that it was active until 1750, and now there is a period of calm. Melbourne is also famous for having a helipad and a polar station at the top of its crater, laying on the background of the purest snow cover of Antarctica. A bright spot of unnatural color stands out. This is the bloody waterfall flowing out of the underground lake of the Taylor Glacier. The high iron oxide content colors the water red and keeps it from freezing at low temperatures. So if you're tired of the hustle and bustle and people, this is the place to go. The highest point of the Ellsworth Mountain System, Vincent Peak, located at an altitude of 4,982 meters above sea level is included in the World Mountaineering Project's seven summits. For every mountaineer dreams to be on this peak someday. Don Juan Juan Lake is a unique natural object, and not only for Antarctica, but in contrast to its subglacial counterpart Lake Vostok, which we talked about earlier, it is considered to be the saltiest body of water on Earth. It has a mineral content of 40%, while the Dead Sea's salinity is 33%. No pickled seals have been spotted. To find yourself in the world of giant icebergs and funny penguins, you should take flights from the countries nearest to Antarctica or expedition cruises on ice-class liners. Today there are 70 permanent research bases on the continent itself and adjacent islands, representing 29 countries from all continents. About 4,000 people live there during the warm season, and no more than a thousand live there during the winter. The risks inherent in Antarctic expeditions have not disappeared, but methods of preparation and response have improved. Today's explorers are better prepared for extreme cold, unpredictable weather and possible medical situations. The desolate beauty of the continent and the extraordinary efforts made by those who want to understand it command great respect, emphasizing the endless human desire to explore the horizons of our planet.